Last time on Edgeworth Investigations. But I suppose forgery of evidence is to be expected of a disciple of Von Karma. Wow, you're gonna talk that way about daddy? <laughs> I just... <laughs> the thought of... The thought of Edgeworth calling Mr. Von Karma daddy is cracking me up. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's just so funny. <laughs> I laugh so much. You must be my spirit animal. Hey guys, right in here and welcome back to Edgeworth Investigations. So, I did something really, really dumb right before I started recording this and that is I was just around my kitchen and I'm like ooh this food looks nice so I decided to sniff a certain food turns out that food was covered in cinnamon and pepper so I was choking for like near 20 minutes don't ask me what food contains both cinnamon and pepper or the such. Anyways, we're finally on the last case, which you guys acted like it was the end of the world in the comment section. You're like, he's on, he's on the dreaded case five. It's the end of the game. And this case, apparently, according to you guys, lasts forever, which I think is kind of a sin in the Ace Attorney, uh, or at least visual novel type of thing, especially when... Uh, you have everything separated like this. I feel like when a trial, a case, or a murder mystery goes on for too long, it can cause it to lose luster. But we don't, I don't know yet. You guys know, most of you at least. I assume some of you don't. So let's just see how this case turns out. I'm not sure how it is going to turn out. I'm not gonna, I'm not sure if I'm even going to be able to do my voices properly. But let's see. <laughs> Turn about a blaze. I'm guessing this has something to do with fire. Yes. Two cards. One of the Black Raven. Oh, yeah. So you guys did confirm I was right. The one that Edgeworth got was actually a different color. A country. Wait, what? One in the... Oh, no. Does that have to do with Borgenia? One to the east. When those who are split are made whole again... Drop the match. The truth will reveal itself. No. Dead. What's with like that PlayStation 1 music? Oh. The Yasgarasu, who is apparently a Shin Megami Tensei demon now. <laughs> you, accursed Yasgarasu. Okay, you. Wait, what happened? Oh no, they better not hurt K. Wait, they said a cursed Yantagarasu, so that means either he's talking about K set the building on fire, or K is in the building on fire, and um, uh, you Callisto, Callisto, you is the Yantagarasu in this case. I don't know. I still love how nerdy. Edgeworth is over a steel samurai. I see so many pieces of fan art of Edgeworth sitting next to Maya watching Steel Samurai. <laughs> and Phoenix just working in the background. I never like it's been so long since I played the first games. I don't even I I didn't even have a voice for Maya. She never had the pleasure of getting one because back then I was too uh I guess I was too shy to do any female voices, and I couldn't anyway. It took a lot of practice through Path of Radiance. Anyways. Actually, no, it was more like the trucy voice that got me into doing it. It's so nice, almost dreamlike, to finally have the chance to relax and sip some tea. Especially after what a whirlwind the past few days have been. So I think this is back in the present. Yeah, this is right after the whole K thing. On my return flight, I was dragged into a case involving an Interpol agent's murder. The next day, I investigated kidnapping and a murder at a Gatewater Hotel and theme park, whatever you call it. And later that night, a detective's body welcomed me back to my office. <laughs> Alone with a thief who was out to pilfer files related to a case from ten years ago. How did I manage to find myself in the middle of so many cases back to back? Well, at least I have today. All I ask is that I be allowed to spend it quietly. In comes Gumshoe or Kay. Edgeworth! Oh, it's, oh, it's just Kay. This is big, big, I tell you. Hey, what's wrong with you? Where's your enthusiasm? And suddenly the phrase, the fragility of dreams, comes to mind. What are you talking about, fragile dreams? Come on, let's go, the fake Yachtgross isn't going to just find herself, you know. Well, if you must know, it's possible that I paid a visit last night to your fake. Say what? <laughs> 
Oh, oh, okay, yeah. So, that's assuming that that person who pointed the gun, which would make sense, was you. But that person seems kind of muscular and manly. <laughs> Unfortunately for us, the thief managed to escape. But even now, we're still looking for this criminal. However, I must warn you that we've only had a few hours to search so far. So I must insist that you be patient on this one, Kay. What, what's with you today? Are you sure you aren't sleep talking to me right now? Anyway, I got something much more important that, that I want you to see. Oh, and that is? Take a look at this. Is that the same exact, oh. I thought that was the same exact newspaper we saw from way back in the court case. On March, on March 14th, I will be there to steal your dirtiest secret. It's quite a bold declaration to send to an embassy. I suppose it was inevitable that the newspaper would catch wind of this. The date the card mentions is today. Today, huh? Come on, we gotta hurry. The embassy awaits. I suppose it is quite an urgent matter. However, do you know do you know which country's embassy we should be investigating? Well, it's some really special country, and I'm actually really fuzzy on the details. <laughs> But never mind that. Where's all your energy? Why are you so lack lackadaisical today? I'm not, Kay. You're just too wound up. Well then, you should get <laughs> then you should get too wound up too. Because this just might be our chance to catch that woman. You mean Miss Yu? The woman, the woman who killed Kay's father, Baron Farday, seven years ago. Yep, that's a murder. That's a dead body. That's an unproportionate hand. Callisto Yu. She claimed to be the great thief Yatagarasu. And then disappeared from the courtroom. Ah, she makes me so mad, the phony. Everyone knows the real Yatagarasu would never send something like a calling card. Until a company's underhanded dealings are made public. The target is always totally unaware that the Yatagrasu has paid them a visit. That's what makes the real Yatagrasu so awesome! Nobody ever hears of them and they get no recognition. Hmm. The Yatagrasu's card that's shown in this article looks to me as though it could be genuine. See, that's the thing. Whoever it is, that person isn't the real deal but has knowledge of the Yatagrasu. This isn't a clue that woman's involved and nothing is. Come on, Mr. Edgeworth. Out the door you go! <laughs> Wait, there are a few preparations I must make before we go. There's something interesting about the card that we found last night here in my office. Okay, so Edgeworth's one was the black one, and the original calling card was white. It's of a different color than the one in the article, which makes me wonder why. What's up? Any reason why you're boring a hole through the newspaper with your eyes? Sorry, I can't control my laser eyes all the time. No, no reason at all. Very well, seeing as how Miss Yu is also someone of a special nature to me. I agree there is some merit to be found in investigating this. I knew you'd come around. Huh, edgy. Okay then, well, that was a kind of dull start. <laughs> oh no, you guys told me. You guys told- oh no, not this shit again. You guys told me there'd be more dumb Steel Samurai stuff. I said I like the fact that Edgeworth is a nerd. I did not say that I like the Steel Samurai being included in things. Especially the final case of the game, which I feel should be somewhat serious. Oh, I thought the guy had a gun. <laughs> they just walked in the room and the guy's like, hands up. I got this camera and I'm not afraid to use it. Huh, what a coincidence. Who's that guy in the back? <laughs> he looks super important. Who would have thought that a Steel Samurai stage show would ever be held at such an elegant theater inside a foreign embassy? Yeah, the climax is really awesome. Steel Samurai Sushi Slice. I got chills down my spine when he pulled that move out. Suppose it really is more impactful to watch a show in person than on television. I love how Edgeworth is so open with the fact that he just loves the Steel Samurai. I have to say, though, this embassy is kind of set up funny. I mean, they have two counties sharing the same build- or countries sharing the same building. 
Well, as you said to yourself, this place and the countries it houses are very special. Even this theater is special, in that it is a neutral zone shared by two countries. But as soon as they get outside, they just start killing each other like animals. It's rather awesome. Metal, if you would say. Um, so let me get this straight. The Steel Samurai show just now is being sponsored by one of the two countries. The one that's called the Kingdom of Alabast. Wow, that's a JRPG kingdom of... No, actually, um... Never mind. That is, uh... I think that might be an allusion to, a. Uh... I'm not going to make the connection, never mind. Never mind, I'm not going to make the historical connection right now. Alabast, right? Yes, yeah, so it appears that Steel Samurai is very popular in that country as well. Seems that way. But you know who I'm really into? The Jammin' Ninja! Oh, get that trash out of my face, Kay. <laughs> Just gets really butthurt about it. The Republic of Babal is sponsoring the Jammin' Ninja stage show. That's something for fangirls like me. You totally gotta see that too, Mr. Edgeworth. The Jammin' Ninja show is gonna kick the Steel Samurai show's rear end. Oh. You know, ever since I first met this girl, I've always had this inkling... that what she really wants to be... is not a thief, but rather a ninja. <laughs> yeah, I'll just reclass my job into ninja. So anyway, about today's event, um, what's it called again? The Kingdom of Alabast. Am I, am I pronouncing that right? Alabast. Yeah, okay. I have it right for once. Versus the Republic of Babel. Goodwill Jubilee. Okay. The small European countries of the Kingdom of Alabast. Wait, what? That's Europe? And the Republic of Babel. Is that like... Ru Russia? Is that supposed to be like a... I, I don't know. Never mind. These two countries used to be a single entity that was abundant in nature. And it was called the Principality of Kadofia. Oh my god, what is this? The Principality of Zeon. Hmm, is everything alright, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, I'm alright, moving on. After a period of civil unrest, the country split in two, though signs of their past remain. For example, their flags preserve the flower and butterfly motifs to this day. Really? I don't know. That The one on the left looks like a bunch of, like, a cut-in-half piece of citrus with some guitar picks in the middle. And the one on the right looks like, I don't know, a Fire Emblem map. <laughs> Kadofia, huh? The KG-8 incident, and what was referred to as the second KG-8 incident, in which an embassy staff member was murdered. Both of these cases were related to the Principality of Kadofia. In the seven years that have passed, the country may have split in two. However, the Yatsugurasu still sent a calling card here. What could it all mean? I find it really weird that they're trying to shove, like, countries in here and trying to build a world of some type. I, I don't know. Just feels unnatural. Mr. Edgeworth, I know you're thinking about something. Oh, excuse me, what were we talking about again? Uh, if you could please stop spacing out on me. Anyway, we were talking about Alabast versus Babel, Goodwill, Jubilee. The two countries have had a pretty bad relationship with each other. But supposedly they've been trying really hard to make up recently. That's why they decided to hold this event. If that's the case, then why the verses? Also, both countries claim to own the real pri... Primidu Studio, or st Primidu Statue, a national treasure to both. Or I guess it's Primidu, whatever. They're planning to have them publicly evacuated today to see which one's the real deal. Or evaluated, evacuated. Quickly evacuate the statues, they might get damaged in the war. <laughs> okay, I need to remind, need I remind you to take care of and not succumb to your thieving desires. <laughs> well, that well, when it comes to treasure, I can't help myself, you know that. Uh... She'd better be saying that in jest. <laughs> hey, I can read your body language, you know, and you got it all wrong. Look, I'm here to do some investigating. INVESTIGATING! I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Although we don't know if the Yantgrasu will really make an appearance. I suppose we should still spend some time examining this place. Oh my god, look at all these people. Hello, Mr. Oh no. Is that lot of heart over there? Just pretend like I didn't see it. 
Just, Edrith, who is that lady over the- No one, there's no lady. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, okay, that's good, all right. Now give me a dra dramatic slam right here. Right there. Stop, stop. Hey, do you mind? Get out of the way, buddy. Okay, once more in three, two, one, action. Okay, was that my fault just now? Well, he's obviously working. I guess we should leave him alone. <laughs> I feel like I'm supposed to recognize this child, too, but I don't. It appears that the child is watching a video from the first season of The Steel Samurai. <laughs> Just get super in-depth on it. From episode 4, minute 13, second 23. Go, go! Keep on fighting until your last breath! Go, my hero, the Steel Samurai! Completely absorbed in singing the theme song, I see. Let the child watch in peace. <laughs> Etros just starts singing really loudly along with him. Where in tarnation are they? Come on, big scoop! Hey, mister, out of the way. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Uh, seem to remember this woman from somewhere. Just my instincts are directing me not to engage in direct conversation with her. Perhaps it would be best if I left her alone. Uh, do I have the name right? Lot of Heart? I think that's what it is. It's been a long time since I uh, played the second game and the first game, which she was also in. So. Hey, girl. You know, I've seen a, a lot of these shows. Okay, just skip on your own. Skip your own dialogue, you ass. I can't... I can't read this. Alright. Okay. Alright, then. Suppose there's no graceful way to enter this conversation. <laughs> what about this guy? Ten more minutes. No, in five more minutes. But isn't that really bad for me to spend time doing this? It's no use. Would someone just please tell me what I should do? You appear to be troubled by something. May I be of any assistance? Leave me alone. I'm trying to figure out just the right time to talk to that girl over there. If I mess up, it'll be because I'm talking to you right now. <laughs> so I'm gonna get the feeling he's about to fall flat on his face, and I will laugh. Well, let's just do as he wishes and leave him alone. Okay, then. This is the perfect angle. Go, my image. Travel across the wave world and on t into every TV set around the globe. A more honest approach to appearing on TV might serve your ambitions better. What about you, Miss Lady? And we're here reporting live from the Theatrum Neutralis. That's a cool name. As you can see, tonight's audience is full of enthusiasm. Let's see what this member of the audience has to say. Well, I... Well, okay, that was good. Let's do one more run-through. Excuse me, but when are you ready to film for real? Would you mind giving me a call? I sense that she didn't hear a single word I just said. <laughs> oh, that must be the most embarrassing thing. I hate that when someone's just talking and you answer their question. The national flag of the Republic of Babel is on display here. The crest on it features a butterfly. It's really rare to see a national flag featuring an animal on it. Not really. I can list at least a few off for you that do. Okay, then, are there any flags with really chick things on them? Chick things? I'm confused too, Edgeworth. That's, uh, pretty vague, Kay. Although, by my definition, there aren't any flags that feature a chick object. Aw, that's too bad, because if there was, I was thinking about stealing it. <laughs> what exactly would you do with a stolen national flag, Kay? <laughs> There's something I can help you with. I was wondering what's beyond these doors. Tell me immediately. The Babalese... what? The Babalese Embassy is just beyond these doors, sir. Do you have some business with the Embassy? Do you require immediate access? Oh no, that's quite alright. Are you sure? I can just open the door. A anyone and everyone is always welcome. Please, I'm alone. Well then, since we're here... The em an Embassy is in some sort of theme park, Kay. Shh, you're such a buzzkill. Please, come back! I stand in front of this door until I die! What a nice man. Is there something I can help you with? I was wondering what is beyond these doors. It's the Alabastian Embassy, unless you have some business with the Embassy. Suppose I can't really claim to have any business with the Embassy right now. Okay, so these countries are complete opposites. One's just like, yeah, come in, whatever, have fun. And this one's just like, no, you're not getting in here over my dead body. 
Well, you don't have to be so rude about it, Mr. Guard. Hmm. Oh, wait, that's Kay. I was like, that's really out of uh, character for Edgeworth. <laughs> well, in we go, I guess. I'm out of options. Oh, no, there is no inn. The national flag of the Kingdom of Olibos is on display here. The crest on it features a flower. Flowers and butterflies are kind of rare motifs for flags, don't you think? Well, when they are used to be, when they used to be Kadovia, the government used to take pride in its land. The citizens also loved the rich, bountiful nature around around them, thus the design. Hey, if the Steel Samurai got popular enough, do you think they'd put him on their flag? Are you in your right mind, Kay? Hmm, or maybe the Jam and Ninja would make a better candidate. <laughs> Don't make me laugh, Kay. Only the Steel Samurai deserves such an honor. <laughs> uh, I love, uh... Edgeworth's on the down low fanboyism. <laughs> Edgeworth spent the next three hours on Reddit shitposting about how Steel Samurai is much better than the Jammin Ninja. There are pamphlets about the two embassies here on this table. That totally won't be used later in the murder. Hmm, it still looks kind of weird to me. The country split into into a few uh, split into two a few years back. And they've shared- and they've shared the building and its grounds 50-50 ever since. Oh, I guess it's because they don't have the money to build two separate ones, huh? I- I should think that's not the reason why, Kay. Suppose I'll just help myself to one of these? Yay! Oh, hey, it's done. What is all the hubbub? Oh! Hey, look! It's Steel Samurai! And he's got his son, the Iron Infant. The, the Iron Infant? That sounds like some sort of death metal song. With him. Oh my god, stupid. I hate it. Come on, let's go talk to this steel loser. Can I speak with you for a second? Can I touch your crotch plates? I swear it's nothing sexual, just... It's fanboyism, trust me. It's- it's the Steel Samurai. Mr. Edgeworth, what are you glaring at him for? Ahem. Please excuse me. It's just that I've never seen a superhero up close before. <laughs> Looks like he's written something down for you. To Edgeworth. Wait, how do you know Edgeworth's name? <laughs> wait, wait, what? He- he just... He knows Edgeworth's name already? <laughs> He's like, yep, that's Edgeworth, all right. My biggest fan. <laughs> to Edgeworth from Steel's Samurai Daddy, married man of Neo Old Tokyo. Wow, an autograph. Pretty cool you got one, huh, Mr. Edgeworth? Huh. <laughs> I will take this to the grave with me. <laughs> oh, I thought that was Clavier for a second. Mr. Steel Samurai, Ambassador Alba is waiting for you. And now the Steel Samurai will proceed to enter the Kingdom of Alabas to shake the hand of the Ambassador, and not murder anyone! The Steel Samurai isn't only here for two countries, but rather it can be thought of as goodwill from the Ambassador from our country as well. There, there he goes, off to spread goodwill to the world. You mean murder, Kay. He really does seem like a goodwill Ambassador, doesn't he? Okay, we're shooting the next segment now, cute camera. In just a few seconds, the Jam and Ninja stage show is set to begin. After the show, the Jam and Ninja will enter the Republic of Babel. He is set to meet with the Ambassador of Babel at that time. Ah, the Jam and Ninja show is about to start. We gotta get back in our seats. Regrettably, I don't have much of an interest in ninjas. Well, this show will change your mind. Come on, we have to hurry. No, must stick to fanboy. <laughs> If we miss even a second of the Jam and Ninja's awesome playing, I'll never forgive you. Ah, <laughs> uh, I suppose you're not about to give me much of a choice here, are you, Kay? Solving murders and having fun in the process. I could listen to that a ninja marked for death's lullaby song all day. His superb playing and that sad melody really brought a tear to my eye. And his heart-wrenching voice, now that's the Jam and Ninja's greatest weapon. Ah, oh, those pieces of Jam and Ninja merchandise over there. I have to get them. 
especially want the hair sticks they're selling exclusively at these shows. They're exactly like the ones the heroine Princess Misola wears in her hair. Huh. And that's... I notice you also have a very similar hair stick that's a key that is probably a hyper-relevant plot item, but we're going to ignore that for right now. I highly doubt that's just a design aspect. Anyway... Anyway? Anyway? Hold it right there, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes? You think you're going home, aren't you? Well, it doesn't seem likely that the Yatsukurasu will be making an appearance tonight. Most likely, it was simply a prank. No way, I just know the Yatsukurasu will show. But I thought you said that the Yatsukurasu doesn't send calling cards. Yeah, I did, but... I figured from the very beginning that this wild would wind up being a wild goose chase. But that card she sent was a genuine fake calling card. A genuine fake? <laughs> well, how can I word this? The Atsukurasu's mark on that calling card is exactly the same as my mark. Get it now? We, we've got a problem. The Atsukurasu's been spotted and all bossed. What? You hear that, Mr. Edgeworth? Ha! Huh, so you finally decided to show yourself, phony. Get out of my way! Hey, what gives? I'm sorry, but I will need to search you before you may enter. What the- Hey! The Steel Samurai just waltzed straight on through without one. Now, if you don't hurry up and let me through, my phony is going to escape. Okay, a country's embassy is considered to be part of the country itself. If you don't go through the proper procedures to enter the country... Mr. Edgeworth! I'm going to enter through... Ball and climb over the wall to Alabast. You... You, you just said that. <laughs> you would tell a prosecutor straight out that you intend to illegally enter another... Okay, are you even listening to me? K... <laughs> K-Faraday, I'm coming through. <laughs> oh, she just punched me in the crotch. Yes, welcome. <laughs> Someone stop her. Anyone. As no one moves from their spot to do anything. Whoa, what is this? Like a stage prop? Ugh. Ugh. Should really do those radio calisthenics more often. Okay, where are you? Don't tell me you really did find some way over this fence. Ugh. Oh my goodness, the building's on fire. Okay. <laughs> fire, it's too big for us to handle. Looks like the Yachtgrasu came to Babel, too. You... Accursed Yatsugrasu. Kay, you... You'd better be alright, wherever you are. Oh, so Kay climbed up in the building. Oh no, and she's gonna be accused too, because she decided to climb through the window. Uh. I told you, it wasn't me. Ugh. Okay, are you all right? Do I look all right to you? Now can you do something about this woman? Mr. Edgeworth? Detective Gumshoe? What is the meaning of this? Well, sir, it's, um, this. He's... It wasn't me! He was already dead when I ran in here, hot on the heels of the fake Yadagrasu. Look, I only came in because I saw a suspicious person at the open-air stage. A suspicious person. A long black coat and a hood over their head. I dare you to tell me that that's not suspicious. When I saw that person, I immediately thought that they must be the fake Yadagrasu. So I chased after them into the embassy and then into here and then lost sight of them. But I just know that person is the one who did it. What are you so worked up over? There's no reason for you to be this loud. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're Agent Lang's secretary, right? Sheena, I believe your name is correct. Do you know what? I'm gonna make a tiny little, um, accusation here. I'm probably 100% wrong, but for some reason, I feel like... I, I don't know if I want to make this, because I don't want to be wrong. Like, that's the worst thing I do and make a major accusation I'm wrong. Uh, I was very lucky with Path of Radiance into Radiant Dawn, but there's a lot of things I said that are wrong, and people are just like, what? That makes no logical sense. But, 
I have a feeling that, uh, what's her face? I already forgot her name. She something? White haired lady standing right in front of us. Well, no, she has a different eye color. I was, I was gonna say that she was, um, like Callisto, you in disguise or something, but she has a completely different eye color. Like, it doesn't make sense. And her head shape is different too. It looks like. She has like this weird bowl haircut. But I feel like she's gonna be, like, disguised as someone or hiding in something in this case. Look, she's already on the thing! She's already here, like... She, she's here somewhere, but I don't think she's her. Maybe there's another female that'll get introduced. Or Gum, she's gonna pull off his face and be like, It was me all along! Callisto, you! <laughs> like, what? If you're making an arrest, I assume you have evidence that it was Kay who committed the crime. Is that also correct? You refuse to answer. I don't need to... Wait a minute. Hold on, I think I just caught something. The, um... This could be a... I swear, if I if I figure this out, and this is real, I'm gonna lose my mind. But the, the animation of her pulling off her glasses is a lot like the animation of her, uh... Of Callisto you putting the lipstick on and having it drag across her face really quickly. If I am right, I'm gonna be so happy with myself. <laughs> I don't need an answer. You are merely a prosecutor in this country, meaning you have no investigative authority. Hey, hey pal, what, just what the heck does that, what, what you just said mean? If it happened here, it's under Mr. Edgeworth's jurisdiction in the end. And seeing as how this building is sitting in our soil, we can investigate whatever we'd like. Unfortunately, Detective, embassies are a different matter. Huh? This office is considered to be a part of the Republic of Babel. Which means that anything that happens in here defaults to the control of Babylese government and Babylese law. Giving them extra ter extraterritorial rights. Extraterrestrial rights? They're aliens! Oh no, those goddamn sectoids are gonna mind control you and make them kill me! Uh, wh what are you talking about, Gumshoe? Hide from the sector pause, quickly! <laughs> Sir, do you really believe that the truth is out there? Uh, basically our country's laws do not apply inside the embassy of another country. That's what was agreed to by our respective governments. You know, Maripan. Our authority to investigate was effectively nullified the second we entered this place. Which means we can do little here in this situation. N no way, sir! Please leave this matter in Aeropol's hands and go home. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth. Hey, you're not... Mr. Edgeworth! In that case, allow me to join your investigation. Oh, he's Von Karma and... Um... <laughs> and, uh, someone very creepy. You know what, maybe it wasn't her who did it. I didn't expect to meet any new people in this case. Maybe I'm just jumping to conclusions. <laughs> Ambassador- wait, Francisca. Ambassador Palino, I truly appreciate you allowing me to join the investigation. It's really nothing! Manny was my secretariat, so of course I want to help you as much as I can. I don't know what this weird voice is. It's like Japanese man trying to voice act English lines or something. In fact, it is a blessing that Interpol agents were able to make it so quickly. Francisca? Well, well, I never imagined that I'd meet you here of all places. This, this is an embassy meeting that you have no authority to conduct. Uh, already? What is it? <laughs> Ambassador Palano. And you are? I'm Miles Edgeworth, public prosecutor. I ask that you please allow me to investigate this case Ms. Von as Ms. Von Karma's assistant. A assistant Miles? What the heck do you think you're- Please, I implore you, Ambassador Palano. Very well, I'll be counting on the two of you, Ms. Von Karma and Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, what did you mean by you'll be Ms. Von Karma's assistant? Don't exactly have a choice, do I, Detective? If I don't become Francisca's assistant, I can't participate in, in this investigation. Hmm, there you go again, running at the mouth with what aloof expression on your face. Or with that. Francisca, please. 
I don't know what you're planning quite yet. But at least I do know one thing, that you are now my subordinate. Oh yeah, she didn't actually whip us this time. Just remember that my whip is always ready to wake you when you should ha when you should have a brain lapse. Of course, I'll keep that in mind. If you are done playing games. Right, let's begin to this investigation. Now that I think about it, Sheena hasn't talked much at all until now. I, li I really like her design though, so I do hope that she's a continued character. Bubbly Embassy, Secretary Office. By the way, Detective, I suppose it's a bit late to be asking, but why are you here? Well, better late than never, I guess, sir. I was placed on guard duty for the Bobalese Embassy today. And why are our police guarding an embassy? Well, on account of the guard they got from the Yadagarasu. They called us up and asked for our help, sir. Oh, and because we've been searching for the Yadagarasu these past seven years. It was more or less mutually beneficial agreement. If you ask me. Except for how mutually unbeneficial this all turned out to be, I suppose. Looks like you failed to com competently perform your guard duty yet again. Ah! <laughs> Look forward to your next salary negotiation, although it's out of my hands. But sir, if, if, if it gets cut anymore, I won't even be able to buy even the packet noodles anymore. The packet's inside the noodles. <laughs> well, that's not my problem now, is it? So a victim was the secretary of this embassy, I take it. Manny Kochen, I heard that he was an admirable person, very admirable. The cause of death is a stab to the base of his neck. He was lax in watching his back. We were fortunate that the fire missed our victim's body for the most part. If the fire had burned a bit longer, it would have made identifying him a hassle. So Mr. Kochen was stabbed to death in the middle of a raging fire. <laughs> That's a way to go. What in the world happened inside of this room? I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Whoa, what's that with that ceremonial knife? <laughs> Is this knife the murder weapon? Some preliminary testing has been conducted. According to the results, the blood that matches on the victim or the blood that matches the victim blood. The victim's blood. The blade shape was also found to be consistent with the stab wounds. Suppose that means we now know that the crime was committed with this knife. This knife's got some really fancy ornamentation going on. Huh, sir? This thing practically screams RT at me too. <laughs> Although it's also covered in blood, just like the last thing that I said was RT. <laughs> hmm, but the handle is pristine. There's not a single drop of blood on it. Speaking of the handle, I believe it has a butterfly motif. It's very beautiful. Not that I like butterflies or anything. Okay, let's stare. Oh, he has one of the Yachgrasu keys in his pocket or whatever. It's a knife wound. It's obvious that he... that It's obvious what he was killed with, but I wonder if it's consistent with the wound. Indeed. Wait, wait. You wonder, but they... Didn't Sheena just confirm that a second ago? I I'm sorry, did I miss something? But I swear Sheena just said like, Oh, the knife wound's consistent with the- Okay, whatever. Hmm? There appears to be something in his pocket. This key, it can't be. Isn't this the Asagarasu's key that was stolen seven years ago? What? But that's- Huh, seven years ago- you mean the case where I was framed, sir? Yes, it's a piece of evidence that stole the life of Kay's father seven years ago. Which was then stolen by Callisto Yu. Yeah, okay, this is making me all the more, like, uh, suspicious of Sheena. Like, I don't know, it feels too... I, it's like, she was the only person in the room. Callisto Yu's missing. She has a very similar animation with her sunglasses, like... All I need to see is the laugh. That's all I need to see. I am so convinced now. <laughs> what? What? Mr. Faraday was killed with his key, sir? I thought he was killed with a knife. <laughs> Scruffy, at the very least, try to remember the details of the crimes you are suspect in. Francisca, as you will recall, Detective Gumshoe was not present when you made her escape. Plus, even among the law enforcement, only a few knew of the key's existence. 
I doubt that a new rookie at the time would have been made privy to such knowledge. Oh, I feel like the victim right now. I'll trampled on, sir. Hmm. Suppose I'll just have to fill you in now. The secret to this key is... <laughs> Turns into, like, a gun. I, oh, I gotta push the button again somehow. Twirl! 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 There we go. Oh, wow! That's amazing, sir! It's like some kind of magic trick. I feel like it's way too obvious that the Yajagrasu's key is just there. I knew it. This is the same exact piece of evidence that Miss Yu took with her. I remember this beautiful pattern on the blade. I remember it this as well. It's a vine motif, isn't it? Yes, it looks like two interwoven vines crisscrossing down the blade. Vines, sir? I think it looks like a bunch of stars, if you ask me. It's just one of those six-sided stars, just like the uh, police marks on our IDs. I really don't think you can call these stars. To say that the detective's art sense is underdeveloped would be an understatement. The real question is, why was Babalis Embassy's secretariat holding this? While we don't know Mr. Cochin came to how Mr. Cochin came to possess this key, we do know that it was stolen by the Atkarasu from the Kadopian Embassy. That's right. Mr. Faraday had written that fact down in his organizer. I believe this means that further research is required into this into the country of Kadovia. Why don't you ask the ambassador Paleno about what he knows? Supposedly, he was a candidate to be the next Kadopian amb uh, ambassador long ago. He should be able to answer any specific questions you may have. Cool. What about this hand? Hmm? This man. Where do we know him from? We already know where he's from. Sorry, but Interpol is still conducting its investigation beyond this point. I'm subordinate to Miss Von Karma. Is there some reason why I'm being denied access? My superior clearly stated, don't you dare let anyone near the site. You got it? Oh, it was uh, Lang that said that, huh? If I let you examine the site, my superior would get really angry at me. And then he'd throw his sunglasses at me and break my neck. You know, Mr. Edgeworth, I feel really bad for the guy, so why don't we just do as he says? Yes, I suppose we might as well. The ceiling fan must have fallen from the ceiling. Ceiling fan? What does one of those do? Wait, what? Wait, did he seriously just ask what a ceiling fan does? Exactly what it sounds like it does. It's a fan that is installed on one ceiling. God, you're stupid. Well, if I had one of those in my room, I bet I'd go dizzy from staring at it as I slept. Detective Gumshoe, in the real world, we close our eyes when we sleep. <laughs> what is this? Oh. Because this is a national treasure, can I ask that you please not touch it? I'm afraid the only ones allowed to touch it are myself and the Secretariat. But there is a possibility that it's related to the murder, wouldn't you agree? Hey, Sir Edward, why don't we just give up for now? No, they're telling us to give up on everything. We can force them to let us investigate it later, once we find some proof. Suppose they don't have a choice here. This must be one of the pri uh, Primidu statues Kay was talking about earlier. Is it just me, or does this man look a little like the Steel Samurai? They could be twins. <laughs> Hey, Kay, you want to talk? Kay, are you all right? You believe me, don't you, Mr. Edgeworth? You don't think I did it, right? Yes, of course I don't, and I promise to prove that it wasn't you. That's enough chit-chat. You can investigate all you like, but it's only a matter of time before we take her in. It would be wise of you to give up all you can. No, I don't think so. Kay isn't lying, and my investigation will prove that to be true. Go ahead and try, then, if you're, c if you're that confident. Can't allow this to be true. On this way, I must prove her innocence post haste. You know, another thing that makes me highly suspicious of uh, Sheena is the fact that Agent Lang showed up in the very last case, and um, like he showed up and disappeared, and nothing else happened. It, like there was nothing from him, or in the case before this, not the very last one, because this is the very last case. So that would be wrong if I said that. Hey, it's another butterfly. 
I believe it is a symbol of the Republic of Babel. Bubble. A drawing this big on the wall of an embassy definitely conveys a sense of overwhelming patriotism. I want Edgeworth Metal Gear Solid 4 mods immediately. Well, I've got a lot to do. I've got a lot of patriotism too, sir. The reason I became a cop in the first place is because I wanted to protect our country. You may want to, Detective. However, I have yet to see the fruits of your desire. Y you don't have to be so blunt about it, sir. Mr. Edgeworth, there's still something on this display rack, sir. A missing knife. Knives, huh? Although the blades uh, are all that remain of them, unfortunately. I guess the handles got all burnt off by the fire. Ah, so even the knives fell victim to the fire. <laughs> Burning! <laughs> I know where I'm getting this goddamn accent from, too. Okay. How are you? <laughs> I know where it's coming from now. <laughs> I was wondering in the back of my head, like, why does this voice sound so familiar that I'm making? <laughs> why, yes, they are. They are a special set of ornamental knives featuring the national symbol of Babel. These butterfly-themed knives are, are, along with Alabas's own set of knives, are comprised of three knives each. But, but I can't believe the Balbis ones have been reduced to this state. Hmm. Ornamental knives, huh? And there's a small release tang on the side of this blade. Bastard Paleno, what is the, the, this notch here for? Oh, that. It's a feature of these knives, wherein you can freely exchange the handles on them. So that we can change how they look to fit the situation, of course. I see, so these knives were constructed so that the handles could be easily removed. Burning! Oh my god, I'm never gonna be able to stop doing this voice. <laughs> these shelves are lined with American souvenirs and memorabilia. It's just a bunch of M16s all over the <laughs> shelves and cheeseburgers. Really strange, isn't it? I mean, I thought this was the Balbese Embassy. By the way, just from the funny way I kind of talk, um, I I'm not sure this is so much anymore, but it used to be that I think about 80% of my viewers thought I was actually Canadian, but I'm not. I am indeed American. I just talk in a weird, proper way that does not suit where I'm from. Or I speak, I should say, in an odd, more proper... I guess... Slang? I guess slang can't be proper, that's kind of a whatever. I, I think I sound American, more American now than I used to, at least doing commentary. So, um, why are there so many souvenirs, sir? Well, then again, my commentary, I'm talking in voices that aren't mine 90% of the time. <laughs> perhaps these, perhaps the Balbees are studying American culture and tourism industry. They have plans to make Balbees tourism industry truly flourish. And they would need to observe and study other countries' methods, I suppose. Speaking of tourism, I got these—I got these from the blonde guy earlier, sir. He said that if I bring these to me with Babel, I can trade them in for new for a few buffets. Oh, so how do you expect to travel to Babel? Well, the whole world is connected by the ocean, sir. And for all you can eat buffet, I'd swim all the way to Babel if I had to. <laughs> can a few simple coupons really motivate people to do such fantastic things? <laughs> Next day is just a news article. Lonely police officer cries and drowns in Atlantic Ocean. Or wherever ocean that is. The Mediterranean. It looks as if there was once a grandfather clock, but it has fallen victim to the fire. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, this is it okay for me to talk about the clocks in my house, sir? If they're unrelated to the case, I hope that you will refrain from sharing, but... Well, there's this one clock that I made by myself, but the timer manages on its own. That's quite enough, Detective. <laughs> that was... that was a quick cutoff point. I feel like we've explored everything, though. I don't think we have any logic points either. Oh. Okay, we can connect these easily. <laughs> the design on the knife's handle. It greatly resembles the special Babylonian species of butterfly. Wow, that took a genius to figure out, huh, Edgeworth? I know I am. It does, doesn't it? Plus, it says it right here. 
This knife is property of Republic of Babel. Huh, I probably could have just read that and figured this out. Perhaps this means that the knife used in the crime was found right in this room. Yeah, on the knife rack with the missing knife, but that knife doesn't look like the other knives, so... Miles Edgeworth! What is it? Let me tell you something, that you are currently my subordinate. And if you wish to convince everyone else of that, you will speak to me with respect. What's with the giddy glint in her eyes? <laughs> I don't think that would be really necessary, Francisca. Oh, really? Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change the fact that you are still under me. I thought Francisca was flying around the world in pursuit of the smuggling case. <laughs> so then why is she here at this embassy? Oh, I didn't think she would come out as a point. Because it's related to the smuggling case, maybe, huh? I was investigating at the Alabastan Embassy when I got wind of this mess. Ah, uh, that's right, the Artagrasu was due to appear at the Embassy as well. Yes, but the difference is that we don't have a fire over there. Although there was an incident at the Alabastan Embassy as well. But I left Agent Lang in charge of the case and came over to the Balbis Embassy. Ah, uh, so Agent Lang is here as well, huh? Sadly, yes. He also punched me in the stomach earlier, it was not pleasant. I see you've met. Well, he is an Alabastian embassy, uh, Alabastian embassy acting as a bodyguard for Ambassador Alba. However, he seems to have a different reason for being there. Yachgrasu. So the suspect in the murder that occurred in this office is this is that little girl. I see. Is she perhaps trying to be the Yachgrasu? K would never harm a soul, sir. K. -K? You remember, do you not, about the case we investigated together seven years ago? That girl is the daughter of the victim in that case, Mr. Faraday. So she's that feisty little girl. Kay has been on the trail of the Yantagrasu, which is how she ended up here. Looking for the one who took her father's life. I see. Kay's trying so hard, but you know what? The Yantagrasu just keeps on tricking us all. Hmm, how so? The Yantagrasu sent a card saying, I will be there to steal your dirtiest secret. Okay, that's kind of weird. But all we've had is an arson and a murder. The lab boys are going in circles. You know what this is, sirs? It's a breach contract, and it's going to be- it's going to wrap the sheet. Or, going on the wrap sheet? <laughs> if you ask me, I'm perfectly fine with the fact that nothing was stolen tonight. I do wonder, though, if Callisto Yu really is the Yasgrasu. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna- st it's pretty solid in my mind at this point. I'm gonna stick to the theory. That she is n indeed not the Yatagrasu, and she seemed to be faking it in the last case to cover something up. But she is indeed standing in this room right with us, dressed as Sheena. Even though that the only doubt in my mind is the eye color, but you could have, like, color contacts. And, like, her head shape doesn't even... Well, like... I don't know. Could just be the artist, but her head's a little more round. And I don't just mean the adorable little bull haircut. I mean the chin, like... Unless she got, like, a face implant or something? I don't know. I just have a good feeling. Or she could be dressed up as the dead person, and it's like she was dead all along, because that guy's face does not look real. And I know that wouldn't make any sense, but, like... This guy's face looks like Satan. Well, I mean, it looks better up close. But, like, look at this. It's not right. It's probably just the weird eye color that are just like gray slits. All right, let's talk to you. I can't believe that Manny fell among the thieves tonight. Without him, I have no idea what my schedule for tonight is. Ambassador Palino, I believe your schedule tonight will consist of listening to reports from the police. That and only that. I ask that you cooperate not only for your own sake, but for Mr. Cochin's sake as well. You're a rather strong man, aren't you? How fascinating! Here, I know this- I know it isn't much, but I'd like you to have these. I'm sorry, but it would be against my principle to accept a bribe. Oh, no, no, no. These are simply coupons we distribute to promote Bayball. Remember, we offer a large number of discounts and offers when you visit lovely Bayball. Now I remember, the Republic of Bayball is known for its feverish tourism industry. I was wondering if you might tell me a bit about the deceased Manny Cochin. He was my secretary, and the embassy secretariat charged with running the whole place. He was an admirable man, 
His death is a great loss to our country. He was in charge of everything, accounting, printing, taking care of our national treasures. I'm sorry, but did you say printing? Our country's primary source of revenue is our tourism industry. So in order for us to print the necessary pamphlets, flyers, coupons, etc. We have a printing press here at our embassy. I'm actually printing a... I actually designed a flyer for work right now. Just fun side fact. I see. Please excuse my forwardness, however. I should feel that... I, I feel that I should mention that I have the distinct impression that I've met him before. Oh, yes! Since you are of legal profession, I suppose you just might have. After all, Manny was involved in the KG-8 incident. The, the KG-8 incident? The defendant who was found innocent in that case was Manny. So your Mr. Cochen is the same man as the one in that case. It's been ten years. Manny recovered personally from that case and dove enthusiastically into this job. I don't know if this voice is really working. It's fun as hell to do, though. I don't know. I don't know if this is a good voice, though. He was the one who planned this event and was overseas. This embassy's or to oversee these re embassy's renovations. It is really a shame he had brought such a he had such a bright future ahead of him. Thank you. Oh my God, you talk a lot. <laughs> Wrong person to get his voice to if he talks so much. What exactly did you mean earlier by renovations? We can't have tourists and visitors at our emb uh, to our embassy to think we are a poor nation, can we? Renovating the embassy is something of an investment. We may have a rather, rather paltry budget, but we're trying our best to make do. However, I guess the only person who could have helped us do our best is now no longer with us. Alright then. Ambassador Palano, I was wondering if I may ask you about Kadofia. Kadofia, all right. What would you like to talk about? First, I'd like to ask you about the key. Hmm, what about this key? I found it sticking out of Mr. Cochin's pocket. I believe it originally belonged to this embassy, is that correct? Hmm, upon closer inspection, it seems that this key is shaped like a butterfly. That's not all about this key. It's also capable of changing into a knife. Like a switch axe. Damn, those things are cool. How fascinating! Is it possible that the ambassa amb ambassador, <laughs> the ambassador did not know of the existence of this key? Hmm. In its knife form, there's a flower mark on the base of the blade. Hmm. I guess this knife might j might be from when we used to be part of Kadopia. <laughs> and how did you come to that conclusion? It has both Kadopia's national symbols, the butterfly and the flower. I suppose Manny used this key here at the embassy back when we were still in Kadopia. Yeah, I didn't actually notice that, huh? If I was paying more attention to detail, I might have actually picked that up really quick, huh? Ambassador Paleno, this key was stolen from the Kadopian embassy seven years ago. By Callisto, you otherwise known as the Great Thief Yacht Grasu. Uh, oh, really? You are not aware that Miss Yu had broken into the embassy at that time? I'm sorry, I can't be of much help. I'm not very familiar with the details you see. I only became the ambassador after Babel came became its own independent nation. But if Manny were still alive, he would probably know about what happened back then. Mr. Cochin and Miss Yu knew each other seven years ago. But that doesn't explain why I found the Atragrasu's key here in the present. I can present things to people, I forgot about that. What can you tell us about the statue? The statue resembles that hero, the Steel Samurai, don't you think? Yes, I know what you're talking about. I was thinking, what would you say to changing the name to the Steel Samurai statue? Might just attract a few more tourists to our country if I did, right? I I'm not sure what to think. I thought that thing was a national treasure. <laughs> no, all they care about is the money from tourism. Oh, that is a prosecutor's badge. It is very cool design. Aha, I know. We should start selling items like this as souvenirs and Bayball. <laughs> wow, they're really tourist heavy. <laughs> like, jeez. Did you know in Bayball tourism, you can buy slaves? <laughs> Only $5.99 for five slave hour. The tourists will absolutely go nuts over them. 
Please don't compare a proud symbol of my profession to a cheap souvenir. <laughs> okay, then. Um, well, I'm stuck talking in that voice. Although, I guess when I do get excited, that's a similar voice, but... Anyways, uh, the embassy guide? Maybe? I don't know. Well, I guess he'd know something about this. Check? Yeah, I guess he'd know about this, since he's so, so like, tourism and pamphlet heavy. Oh, isn't that our great embassy? Oh, how do you like our pamphlets? I feel indifferent about them, to be honest. I was just using this as evidence. Well, that's too bad. In that case, I guess we'll just have to try harder and make more charming ones. I, I just had a flash of inspiration. We should make all of our pamphlets into coupon books. His expectations of what a coupon can do is just a tad hyperinflated. <laughs> See you later, crazy salesman. Hey, you want to see my badge, Mr. Deadbody? Isn't it cool? I'm a prosecutor now, right? Okay, oh, she's not going to say anything. Can I talk to the guy now? Sorry, but... Uh, nah, 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 nah. Do we have any more logic to connect? Oh, we do have several. Okay, so Yasu, uh, Francisca's back because the Yacht Grasu warned to steal a secret. That's why. To steal your dirtiest secret. Is it possible that the dirty secret the Yacht Grasu was out to steal in this very room? Dirty secret? Francisca, you're in pursuit of some dirty underhanded dealings yourself, are you not? Something tells me that this is no coincidence. In that case, then, the person I'm looking for is here in the ba Babelese Embassy, huh? The head of the smuggling operation. I think I might just need to ask Francisca about her smuggling case in more in depth. Talk to me, Franzi. Francisca, when we last talked, you said that you were on the trail of the, the, trail of the smuggling ring. I suppose the reason you are here right now is l related to that, right? Yes. After analyzing the intel we've gathered from various countries, and I mean, I searched on Google for five minutes and used Google Analytics, this embassy rose to the top of our list of sites to investigate. And this is what tipped us off. This accounting document? It's, the only, it's only one page of the whole thing, so we're not sure about all the details. However, it's enough to, for us to grab onto the tail of the beast. For you see, this type of paper was made only in the Kingdom of Kadopia. Which means that somewhere in the countries of Alabast, Babel is it, and Babel is the head. The one pulling the strings behind the entire smuggling ring. That's Francisca for you. She's amazing, pursuing this case with all she has. Never mind. Now, finally check out this thing. A small personal safe. This was Mr. Uh, Mr. Cochin's office. So perhaps he stored his most important documents in here. Uh, of course, it's locked. It appears we won't be able to open it without the key. Good thing I have the fire emblem. Wait, what? <laughs> Edward just bashed it with a fire emblem. Good, it is now open. Okay, um, well, do we- Oh, duh. Now I can mash together these two people. I don't want to talk to Gumshoe right now. Yes, sir? Nothing, Gumshoe. God damn it. When you were on guard duty, did you notice anything unusual? Well, I was I was on watch inside the embassy. But unfortunately, I didn't run into the Yacht Grasu, sir. But I did talk to an officer who was on duty near the border between the two embassies. He told me that not a single person crossed the boundary during the incident. I see. Investigations into the fire and the Yandagrasu are a big mess thanks to both events. I'm so confused, sir. I should, be, should I be putting the fire out or investigate? What do you think, sir? Aren't you old enough to solve your own problems yet, detective? <laughs> no, he is not. Logic! Lock, save, key, use to embassy. Embassy, ambassador. That's a word. Well, yeah, ambassador actually is a word. 
We know for a fact that George Grassi's key was used at this embassy. Furthermore, we found it in the victim Mr. Cochin's pocket. Which leads me to think that perhaps this is the key to his personal safe in this office. Good thinking, sir. That's some real logic. I know. I'm a genius. <laughs> Gina's just standing like, oh my god, these idiots. <laughs> it appears I was correct. The key that was left to us in the victim's pocket. It literally turned out to be the key to the next piece of the truth. <laughs> Another key! <laughs> What do we have here? Oh, psh, there's a secret compartment in the safe. And that thing on the left looks like another keyhole, isn't it? That's the trick. There's also a hole in the bottom of the safe. This is obviously paper sticking out from a hidden part of the safe, so... Hey, nothing's inside. D do you think that the Yatagrasu made off with, the ev with everything, sir? No, Detective, I believe all we need is a closer look. The rest until it's inspected. Okay, yes. Oh no, those two holes in the bottom are just where the safe, uh, secured, or the safe bars go when it closes, I think. Hey, there's a hole, sir. It's a little too oddly shaped for a latch hole. Wow, it's a funny shape for a latch hole, huh? <laughs> shape kind of like a star, don't you think, sir? Detective, I would hardly call that shape a star. There must be some reason for this hole. Oh, we gotta stick the knife in there? Well, there's gotta be some reason why this hole shaped so weirdly, you know? Am I overthinking this? No, I don't think so. Hmm, maybe I'm overthinking things. Nah, there's no way. I could never do that. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe, could you please be quiet for a second? You're frightening me. <laughs> oh no, he's mimicking me. He's becoming smarter. Whoops, I, wanna, I meant to explore that more. What is this here? It looks like some like a ripped corner of a piece of paper, sir. No, I don't think it's ripped. It seems more to me like it's stuck in the safe. Hey, you're right. It won't budge an inch, not even when I tug on it. But I don't think I've ever seen a paper stuck inside of a safe before. Detective, I think you have it backwards. It's not the paper that's strange. It's the safe. What do you mean? What I mean is that the secret to the safe is that... It has two compartments. Even just eyeballing it, you, you can see that... Uh, the inside of the, it is a bit too shallow. Furthermore, with the unnatural way the paper is stuck at the back of the safe, I see that there is an extra bit of space behind the back wall of the safe. In other words, this safe has a second compartment. What? what? <laughs> I suppose that you are correct in asserting that the paper is stuck in an unnatural manner. However, if what you say is correct and there is a second compartment, how do we go about opening the door to get to it then? As you can see, there is no lo uh, no other lock or keyhole in sight. Oh, it's her saying that. Actually, there is one more spot of interest to me in the safe. Oh? Yes, and I believe that spot is the keyhole to our mystery, to the second lock. The safe and its locks. Alright then, since you are so sure of yourself, show me how you deduced your answer. Deduce! The spot's somehow connected to any of the evidence I hold. It's gonna be the blade part of the key, right? Because that had the star symbol on it. Doesn't the shape of this keyhole remind you of something, Francisca? No, none of your innuendos right now, Edgeworth. The shape? It does look very familiar. However, I believe it's simply a latch hole for the, for the safe's lock mechanism. It's just keeping the door shut, nothing more. Hold it! Hold it. Is that so? The person who used this safe... Mr. Cochin made sure that this safe has two compartments in order to hide something. Do you honestly think someone like that would allow the keyhole to be hidden half? To look so obviously like a keyhole that even the average person could figure out. You can't be serious. Are you saying that this hole is the keyhole to the hidden compartment of the safe? That's precisely what I'm saying. And I will prove it to you right now. The Yachtgrasu's key is a key that will open it. You have to cross his key? Miles Edgeworth, this had better be a very bad joke. Sorry, but this is no joke. The Yantagrasu's key is the very key that will open the second compartment of the safe. We know that this key opens the first compartment of the safe. But the keyhole you're talking about is of an entirely different shape of, than of that key. No. 
not the blade. Let's go over this again, shall we? The Yantagrasu's key, which was originally made to open Mr. Cochin's safe in the Kadopian Embassy. We confirm that, it, that as a fact by opening this door to his safe with it. Now, let's take a look at the back end of the key. Looking at the knife portion with a head on, what do you see? What are you talking? Ah! It appears that you've come to understand what I'm talking about. No, I stabbed myself in the eye! Guess I gotta wear an eye patch now. Just what Xeno wanted all along. When viewed head on, the knife's blade is the exact exact or is the exact same shape as the keyhole. Yeah, uh, by the way, I've seen a I've seen in a, a design several times for Apollo where he does have a little eye patch thing and an awesome jacket. I swear to god, if that is not real, I'm going to be so upset. Uh, I don't think I'd see that till I play the 3DS games and with the capture card market, I don't know if I'll ever get to play those games on the channel. Or at all. <laughs> the real function of the knife of, uh, portion is to act as the key to the hidden portion of the safe. But, but that's preposterous. Because it looks like a knife and was used like one to kill Mr. Faraday seven years ago. We fell under the misconception that it is always meant to be a knife. But for both the safe and its key to conceal such, a cl such clever tricks. Whatever is hidden inside the secret section must be of incredible importance then it's even possible that what I've been searching for is inside. Scruffy, hurry up and open that safe. Ah, yes, sir. Open it now, sir. What? So, we have a... dragon potion of, uh... stealing, and a plate of mountains, and a badger of Golden unlocking and paper of Nikir. I don't know. These items, they are. That's a bunch of funny shaped things. I get. <laughs> oh, you didn't even get to talk. Ow! You're in the way. Now move, Scruffy. I didn't think I was in the way. <laughs> These pieces of art are identical to the ones that have been stolen from various countries around the world. I figured as much. These are the treasures the section of the safe was to hide from view. Hmm, I believe a more thorough examination is required. Yes, I do believe Edgeworth, because all these items look like gibberish on interesting stuff. Or extremely interesting stuff. Well, I really don't know what I'm supposed to deduce since I'm not allowed to read them. But I'm just going to connect one piece of paper to the other one. And it worked as usual. <laughs> I love my luck with guessing in these games. Take a good look at these documents, Francisca. It says that there are three pages in total, and yet there are only two here. Correct. Or, oh, wait, no, that's, uh, <laughs> Francisca saying that. Correct. Now take a look at the smuggling activity document in your possession. Tell me it's not possible that your page was taken from this set of three. Well, it certainly looks that way. <laughs> By putting our multi-part puzzle together, we seem to have arrived to at an answer. And it seems that you have now found what you are looking for. Yes, with this, it has become crystal clear. That Mr. Cochin himself was responsible for the mass smuggling of Babbly Sink. Babbly Sink. Oh god, this is just like the dumb Borginian cocoons, isn't it? Babbly Sink is a special product of the Republic of ba uh, Babel. Or Babel, as I'm, I guess I'll call it, since that seems to go more than Babelies. However, due to a special reason, only a... Limited volume has ever exported. Hold it. Hold it. And that reason is... That's classified. <laughs> it's on a need-to-know basis, and you don't need to know. And any, in any case, it seems that the head of our smuggling ring is our victim, Mr. Manny Cochin. His base was in an embassy, thus it was hard for both our country and his to interfere. Making it the ideal conditions under which to run a smuggling operation. Ah, oh, but it's so frustrating. I lost the person I was to rain judgment down upon with my whip of justice. Well, even if he is dead, we still have a responsibility to look into his misdeeds. You expecting to whip a dead man? Well, I'm not interested. Francisca, you must know. If Manny Cochin was the suspect in the KG-8 incident. Of course I know. On top of being the head of the smuggling ring. There is another matter of, of what's really happened in that case that needs to be resolved. 
Investigation complete. I'm going to try to do every single one of these episodes until the to be continued screen no longer or no matter how long that takes. So some of these episodes may run a little long and some of them may be shorter. So are you done investigating? You realize now, don't you, that this girl is the only one it could be. Now come along quietly, Yadagarasu, K. Faraday. You're under arrest for the murder of Manny Kochen. M Mr. Edgeworth! Please, you have to believe me, I didn't do it. I chased the fake Yadagrasu in here. And he... he was... already... You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be... say can and will be used against you. Oh, Edgeworth, here we go. I'd like to help you reduce the number of mistake arrests... mistaken arrests Interpol makes. What is that supposed to mean? I believe I told you what, uh, that Cape Farnay is not the culprit of this crime. Very well, I suppose I have no choice. I will show you just how foolish your claims are. Them eyes. Lyris K. Even your police confirm that the Yantagarasu infiltrated the Babalis embassy tonight. Utilizing the confusion caused by fire, the Yatagarasu snuck into this embassy. Furthermore, this girl claims to be the Yatagarasu. And the most importantly, other than her, there is no one else in here with the body. Your reason for suspecting Kay is because you think she is the Yatagarasu. Exactly, but it just isn't- but it isn't just me. She calls herself the Yatagarasu. Uh, look, how many times do I have to tell you? I was the- I was only able to capture the fake Yadagrasu. Yeah, that's real convincing, Kay. Thanks, good job. Look at me as I stare deeply into the sky. Uh, that that's the ceiling. It's still very deep, shut up. Imposter or not, it matters not. A Yatagrasu is a Yatagrasu. Very well, I shall provide that Kay is not the Yatagrasu who killed Mr. Manny Cochin. Go ahead and try. Show me the prosecutors of this country- what the prosecutors of this country are made of. Wow. Also, really not a fan of prosecutors, are we? Even if your police confirm that the Yacht Garasu inflated, uh, inflated, <laughs> they inflated the Bobbley's embassy tonight. They put a jumping castle inside, and we all had a big party. It was great. I'm just gonna press because I feel safest doing that. Usually, you have to start these things off with pressing. They may have confirmed it, but are you telling me that no one could catch the thief? If so, you're basically admitting that the Yatsugarasu committed the murder that eluded us. Of course, I chased after the Yatsugarasu that entered the Bobbley's embassy right away. And that is also why I'm making this arrest right now. Because at the end of my long chase, there was only this girl. And by long chase, I mean I walked slowly after him. Ah! In any case, this is what I believe happened tonight. Utilizing the confusion caused by the fire, the Yadagrasu snuck into the embassy. The confusion caused by the fire? Are you saying that the Yadagrasu was not the arsonist who started the fire? A suspicious person in a long coat was spotted in the area. Officers in the area claim to have seen that person start the fire. Hmm, it sounds like we have a phantom in our midst. Phantom thief. <laughs> Seriously, though. Hmm, yeah. In a way, he could be considered a phantom with the way he randomly appears. <laughs> Furthermore, this girl claims to be Yadagrasu. Just because she calls herself that doesn't prove that she is a killer. No, but it does give her a motive. The Yadagrasu sent a card saying, I will be there to steal your dirtiest secrets. Furthermore, there are documents pertaining to some smuggling activity in this room. She obviously wanted to steal them. So she killed Mr. Cochin for the key. I see. The logic is very sound. I expected nothing less of Agent Lang's secretary. However, that statement just now didn't sound right. It might just be the opening I need. Really? Oh, she append that to her testimony? Hold on, let's go back. I need to... One, two, three, four. Or wait, no, this would be one, so do one, two, 
three, four. Yeah, okay, so I guess she appended that to her testimony then. Um, what is she saying though? She wanted to steal the documents regarding smuggling, so she killed Mr. Cochin for the key. Is that true? But it's impossible that he had the key though, because didn't a different or didn't uh Callisto you have that key originally? So impossible. Objection. Woo! Victory! I did it! Agent Sheena, I regret to inform you, but there's a flaw in your logic. Oh? Even if you claim that she is the killer and that the Yatagarasu. I'm certain that securing the smuggling documents is not a motive behind the murder. Wait, what? Okay, completely different thought process again, but let's go with it. The key to the safe in this room was found in Mr. Kochan's body. Furthermore, the Archgrasu would not be so stupid as to leave without the documents. Eh, uh, yeah. Man, she's sweating really easily. Uh, are, are you okay? I can turn on the AC or something. No, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. But you're, you're literally sweating buckets. I could... I could feed half a country with yours. No, don't worry, it's fine. I like being sweaty. Turns people on, right? Uh, I'm not really into that. I am, sir. Shut up, Gumshoe. By the simple fact that the documents were still in the safe when we locked, when we looked, locked. It's obvious that the killer's target was not the safe at all. And perhaps she, she didn't know that Mr. Cochin had the key on him. If that's the case, then why would she have needed to kill him? Because I can think of no reason for her to kill him if she had not known that fact. Need reason. All of this is simply our conjecturing after the fact. Then you shouldn't arrest her. It's entirely possible that she accidentally killed him when she was sneaking in. Perhaps she didn't notice the safe second compartment before returning the key. Ah! But the fact still remains that Mr. Cochin was stabbed to death. Objection! Objection! But you have no definitive proof that it was Kay who committed the act. Actually, I do. I saw her holding the knife she used on the victim with her own eyes. But what? <laughs> Allow me to tell you a bit more about the evidence that will put her away behind bars. Yay. Prison. The knife wound on the body is consistent with the blade of the knife. The knife with the butterfly handle is the murder weapon which the killer was holding. I assume that she obtained the knife from the display rack and used it on the victim. The knife is part of a th special three-piece set which has a design like no other. The evidence and testimony, it all points to the girl. There is no counter-argument. Okay, one thing I want to check real quick. Uh, th that is your definitive evidence? You see now that she is definitely the killer, right? No, Mr. Edgeworth, you gotta believe me. I saw a suspicious person in a long black coat outside the embassy, I swear. And then you came in here because you were chasing this suspicious person. That's right, I ran into this office only because I was chasing after that person. But when I entered the room, it was pitch black. Couldn't see a thing. I felt something on the ground next to my foot, so I turned the, on the lights, but then... Ah! <laughs> Who's there? This is... Okay, well, maybe she's not... Who I thought she was, because she didn't- she seemed super surprised there. So... I guess we'll take that back. Probably wrong. I came to this room upon hearing the girl scream. And when I saw her holding the knife, I immediately restrained her. So the object K felt by her feet on the floor was the murder weapon. I had the knife analyzed right away, but we failed to find anyone's prints on it. Well, the suspicious person in the black coat who came into this room before me. You cannot continue to insist there was such a person, but if there was, where did they go? I don't know, to the bathroom? I don't know, but I know they came in here. That sounds like the desperate excuses of a suspected killer, not a trustworthy testimony. 
You understand, don't you? We can't trust this girl's words, Mr. Edgeworth. Ah! She has a point. <laughs> Even if Kay's words are the truth, I must show that they are with... S that they are with some solid evidence. Mr. Edgeworth, I really didn't... Kay, don't worry. If you didn't do it, then there must be... then there must exist a way for me to prove that. Still not giving up, I see. In that case, try to counter my argument if you can. Don't worry, I can and I will. I'll parry your goddamn argument. Wait, hold on. I just saw a very important statement. There's a lot of skill d detailing on this handle. It would appear that the handle on this knife is removable. I was on the right track. I got it. I win. I did it. I did the thing. I guess so people can change them whenever they feel like. Sounds like fun, sir. I don't think people would remove the handle just for fun. Yeah, but they would for faking a murder weapon. The butterfly handle. No, they weren't using the butterfly handle. I feel so smart for once. Mm -mm -mm. So the murder weapon was the knife with the butterfly design on it. But is that really the truth? What are you getting at? I'd like for you to take a look at this. There is blood on the blade. And yet, there's not a speck of blood on the handle. This signifies that at the time of the crime, a different handle was attached to this blade. The knife that Kay was holding had its handle switched and was in fact not the real murder weapon. It wasn't the real murder weapon? Okay, so... She obviously doesn't know what's going on here too well. Like, she seems desperate to frame Kay, but she obviously has no idea what's been going on around the crime scene. She's just assuming what happened. This knife can be taken apart. Shall we give it a go? <laughs> Edward just actually cuts off a finger. Holy shit! I think I messed up a little bit. Whoa. All right. <laughs> That's kind of wicked. As you can see, the Bobbly's knife has now been disassembled into two parts. Yeah, that's kind of a cheapy knife, though, if you can just take the blade out. Normally, those super expensive knives are kind of a one-piece thing. But, uh, I don't know much about knives, so... The killer must have pulled the murders, the murder weapon out of the victim's body and proceeded to swap the knife's original handle with his butterfly one. It was all to create the illusion that Mr. Cochen was killed with the butterfly-themed knife. Uh, ah. Okay, that was a different reaction. This should clear up any kind of sus suspicion surrounding Kay. Yay, Mr. Edger, save me. Y your argument isn't airtight yet. How so? It's possible that the girl herself is the one who switched the handles. Don't be ridiculous. What purpose would she do such a thing? I don't care how a criminal thinks. The way they view the world is beyond comprehension of a normal person like myself. Therefore, I wouldn't put anything past them no matter how odd it may seem. Huh. The truth is right here in front of you, and this knife will show you the way. You will come to see that Kay is not and could not have been Mr. Cochin's killer. Wait, what am I doing? Um, okay. Um, what's this on the... I'm trying to zoom in, but... That. What is this mark on here? It's the mark of a flower. I assume you know what this means. No, not really. <laughs> Butterflies rest on flowers all the time to drink their sweet nectar. <laughs> and so they do. However, would this butterfly really drink the nectar of this flower? The answer is clearly not a chance. Now prove the relationship between the butterfly and the flower with this. I actually don't know. I don't know what it wants me to present, honestly. There's a lot of uh, unity symbols we have here. But, um... Oh, duh. I... Pff, damn it. It's the handle part. Because the handle has the butterfly and the knife has the other thing. Nope. Okay. 
I guess I'm wrong. If you're uncertain, then I demand you try again. Ah, yes, that's exactly what I was about to do. <laughs> Good thing she gives us me like five chances, or actually kind of ten. It would appear that this piece of evidence was not sufficient enough. I should think that this I should think this over again calmly and rationally. Flower mark engraved into the blade and the butterfly. Okay, so he's already taken the butterfly in the handle to effect. There must be something. Oh, okay, it just wants me to show what uh, produces both of those symbols. Where is it? Is it this thing? No, it's still samurai photograph. It should be the uh, embassy guide. There we go. You can't be serious. Hmm. It appears that you've made the connection. The flower on this blade is designed after a certain country's national symbol. That's right. The Kingdom of Alabast. In other words, this blade is from one of the Alabast ornamental knives. Ah! Well, she just goes straight back to, eh, I don't really care. Like, for a second, her face, she's like, her face was blown away. She's like, no way, so smart. I guess not. I really like Sheena's design, though. It's probably my favorite design in, uh, Investigations. I don't know. It's just, it's a good color palette. This part of the knife is, this part of the knife handle has Babel's national symbol of the butterfly on it. Therefore, it's undeniably Bob Lee's in origin. But as we know, you can't just kill someone with just a knife handle. Well, you could. I mean, just shove it down their throat and they suffocate. Incidentally, then again, when exactly did the murder occur again, Agent Sheena? I... After the fire had broken out. That's right. Kay entered the Bobbly's embassy after the fire had taken place. Furthermore, she had not been to the Alabastian side of the building before then. On top of that, not a single person had passed between the two countries during the fire. Which means that Kay could not have been transported, uh, could not have transported an Alabastian object over here. This makes it impossible for her to be the true killer. Whoop, way to go, sir. Mr. Edwards, sir, what a great victory. I was ready to pwn some news from the day I came into this room. Day I came in. A minute. Huh? Hey, why is everyone so quiet? Haven't we got this far and cleared Kay's name? But what worries me now is what will happen next. Jackson. Who? Oh, it's her. <laughs> what is the meaning of this? An alabastian knife here. Do you mean, how did this find its way to the Republic of B uh, Babel? It didn't just find its way over, rather we should focus on how it was smuggled over. You know what, my brain hurts thinking about it while just stand while we're just standing around. Thinking while you're on the run, now that's a way to- the that's a way a real great thief operates. Okay? Well thanks a bunch, Mr. Edgeworth, for proving me innocent, I mean. You believed in me the whole time, right? Tell me you did. Well, actually, I was considering for a second that you were the murderer. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> come on, you have to be shy about it. Your argument is still not airtight. Would you care to elaborate? I understand now that the girl didn't commit the murder. However, there is still the possibility that she is the Yatagarasu. That again, look, how many times do I have to explain it to you? I'm the real Yatsugurasu. I'm not like that fake one that goes around setting fires, okay? Whether you're the real deal or the fake doesn't really matter. All I have to say is this. I have my suspicions that this girl is the one who started the fire. Objection! Preposterous! On what grounds do you suspect her of such a thing? The fact that she calls herself the Yatsugurasu, that in itself is, the most, is a most elegant proof. Miss Sheena! Yes? I... I have no intention of talking back and taking back any of what I've said. I am the great thief Yadagrasu, and I refuse to allow some imposter to claim that name is their own. The path of justice that my father pointed me towards, I will walk it to the best I can. It's not good to be so stubborn, I hope you can understand that. Thanks a lot for the concern, Miss Sheena. Let me share something with you too, as a token of my appreciation. Those sunglasses totally do nothing for you, so I'll steal them from you next time, okay? <laughs> what? No, those sunglasses are bitching on me. What are you talking about? Well, I guess we'd better get going. Going? To where? 
The Kingdom of Alabast. I mean, like, over there. Like, I don't know, 40 feet. We don't know for sure, right? I suppose not. We won't get anywhere simply standing here thinking. To see where the Alabastian knife came from. I'll have to pay the Alabastian embassy a visit. Grip the floor. Come on, let's go, Miles. As you are my subordinate, I will not tolerate you bringing the investigation to a halt. Hmm, understood. I love Kay's theme. It's so, like, fun and bouncy. Okay, so you guys are right. This case is long. Because from what you guys told me, one of you guys said the case is divided up into about seven parts. Like, seven uh, to-be-continued screens. So, this is not going to be a short case. And if I'm lucky, I can manage to fit every single um, part into a singular episode. Which is what I'm going to try to do, even if it hurts. But even this one, which I would assume the beginning would be the shortest part... Took around an hour and 30 minutes, so it's quite a while. Anyways, I hope you guys are enjoying the um, episodes or videos. Uh, I've had a lot of good support for this series, and I appreciate that. I'm glad you guys enjoy watching it, because I love doing this series. It's a whole lot of fun, and uh, change up from the other series that I've been doing for quite a while also. So if you like the video, please leave a like. It helps out a lot. And if you want to become a member of the Dust Brigade, just click subscribe. Or don't, and just don't be one. Be a loser instead. Just kidding. Anyways, have a wonderful day. Right now.